Hello and welcome to Start Select, the video game show that could kick your ass at Street Fighter 4 if only it had opposable thumbs. This week, the biggest games are all handheld titles, so we've headed out on the road to go check them out. First, we'll be getting tips on how to be a drug dealer in Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars on the Nintendo DS. Then we'll be checking out Resistance Retribution on the PlayStation Portable. Last but not least, we've also got Metal Gear Solid Touch on the iPhone. Let's find out whether it is the definitive version of the Metal Gear Solid franchise. But now, let's deal some drugs on the streets of Chinatown Wars. Alright Slags, my name is Mr X and I'm here to tell you today about dealing drugs. Not drugs in the real world, mind, but drugs on the streets of Grand Theft Auto, Chinatown Wars. Yo, it's a man hunt. My mentality is malicious. If my fault As a man of many years' experience in dealing the good stuff, I know what it's like to see a good deal go wrong. But I also know what it's like to swim in a pool of my own money. Does GTA convince this lifestyle of you, the oblivious mortal? Well, let's have a butcher's. As a wise man once told me in the dock, if you're going to be a criminal, sell drugs. It's the only way to make a profit. And even though the programmers behind this game are probably pasty, spotty geeks, they must have spent some time locked up with that same geese who told me that. In this game, the only way to win is to play the game like Scarface and build up your empire of drugs, killing anyone in your way. Key is, you've got to know the market, right? It's all about supply and demand. There are six types of drugs available from heroin, coke and ecstasy, right down the low end of your acid, weed and downers. Each drug's got a street value, and the way it succeeds in this business is the same as any other. Buy low and sell high. Whether you're a mafia man or a stoner in his bedroom, if you're dealing drugs, you've got to have a PDA. This here DS thingy is just like a PDA in lots of ways, what with it having a touch screen and all. And the bottom screen is just like my Blackberry. I can receive emails, get tip off some dealers about cheap drugs they're selling, and program a route into the GPS so I can get home for Trisha in the afternoon. Dealing drugs is a business, and in the world of narcotics, I'm like effing adding sugar. I got my network of informants giving me tip offs to make some serious money. I'm out on the streets buying coke at half the market value before I sell it to some other pool sack for triple the price. And I'm so unscrupulous that if I know of some stash of amphetamines, I'm there stealing them as well. Hey, no one said you had to play fair in this game. Here's an insider's tip from your old pal, Mr. X. Watch out for those vans marked with a hovering red arrow. They're like Santa Claus to a dealer like me. They're packed to the brim with drugs, guns, or some other goodies that can be converted to cash. Stealing one ain't the easiest thing in the world, but shove a few Molotovs up their ass and they'll drop their drawers faster than one of Mr. X's European hookers. The pigs ain't got a chance of hell of catching good old Mr. X at his game. And it's the same in GTA Chinatown Wars. I'm too clever for them. I stash my coat and my weed in my stash box instead of having it in the boot of my car. Right next to my jewel encrusted bomb and diamond encrusted pillbox. Alright guys, you're joining me down in the uh, GameSpot breakout area today to have a look at Resistance Retribution. Now this is the pretty much the big title, the big first title from Sony's self-proclaimed year of the PlayStation Portable. Um, and it's without doubt the most technically advanced PlayStation Portable game we've ever seen. Um, and it's also a pretty good game in its own right, if you can put up with the horrible English accents. So let's go and take a look at the three main components of the game, the single player, the multiplayer and the connectivity with PlayStation 3. Alright, so Resistance Retribution fills in the gap between the first game in the series and the second game. Um, it's, st it's set mostly uh, in England and it takes place in 1951, just for those who are keeping track of the chronology of the series. You play this character, this Englishman called James Grayson, and his, uh, his brother is, is captured by the Chimera and then tortured and killed. And uh, he's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder as old Grayson about this. So he sets about uh, trying to take down the Chimera, destroying a lot of the centres where they're taking the humans um, and just running on a, on a bit of a rampage. He's court-martialed, he's sentenced to death, but then 
wouldn't you believe it, some of the uh, military guys come in and decide to save him and take him on a special mission. So while uh, Resistance Retribution is a third person action game rather than a first person action game like the uh, Resistance 1 and 2 on the PlayStation 3, uh, it does retain most of the hallmarks of the series, namely the really imaginative, uh, imaginative weapons. The only downside that I found as an Englishman is James Grayson's horrible Mary Poppins shiny shoes governor accent which uh, it will grate on any Englishman after the very first cutscene. We got a live one in here! No, Johnny. It's his brother. You know the rakes. We can't let him live. All right, so in what can only be described as an orgy of Sony interconnectivity here, you can actually link up your PlayStation Portable to the PlayStation 3 and Resistance 2 if you've got a copy of that. Um, and you can un unlock some really cool features in Resistance on the PlayStation Portable. So um, here on the PlayStation 3 screen, we've got inf the option to infect Resistance uh, Retribution on the PlayStation Portable, which means that the character of Grayson um, is actually infected in the game. He can now breathe underwater. He, um, he, he's got kind of, he, he's got a regenerative life, which means you can go and uh, go and find out different areas in the game that you couldn't before, which is really cool. Conf collect these infected documents, and if you collect all 20, you can actually get unlock uh, plasma grenades. There's also a new gun, so it's, it's all really cool. You can unlock lots of content by using your PlayStation 3. Uh, so on to the multiplayer now. Resistance Retribution is really impressive in terms of its multiplayer features. Uh, fans of the series may remember that Insomniac pretty much revolutionized the PlayStation 3's multiplayer capabilities by offering 60-player multiplayer for the PlayStation 3, and while it would be an amazing feat to include that on the PlayStation Portable. They've done a pretty good job of it. Um that you can play in ad hoc mode, so you can play uh, local wireless multiplayer, but probably most people will play on infrastructure mode, which means you can actually jump online with your PlayStation Portable and go and play people from all around the world. Now, I've been playing a few games of this in the office today, and I'm really impressed with it so far. Um, it's got five multiplayer modes, most of which should be familiar to, to regular online gamers. It's got Team Deathmatch, Deathmatch, Capture the Flag. So the, the one mode that I, that's really doing it for me, though, that's quite unique to this is, uh, is the Assimilation mode, in which the human players have to stay as alive as long as possible racking up points until they're killed by one of the alien forces and then th they're turned into one of the aliens and um, it might it reminds me a little bit of the counter-strike zombie mod which some players might know from the pc but it's a really great mode it's it's unique to, to resistance and it's really really f uh, fraught when you're playing online a lot of the human players are just trying to defend themselves to the last while they're defending this onslaught of alien attacks um, but the other the other modes are great as well and there are five multiplayer maps i have to say that playing it on the playstation portable online is still a relative rare occurrence I remember seeing it in Wipeout but um, I thoroughly enjoyed it and it's, it's probably one of my favorite uh, favorite modes in Resistance Retribution. All right competition time now last week we gave you the chance to win 10 limited edition Resident Evil 5 satchels a prize that isn't available in stores but it is very limited edition so the winners of those satchels are Abu Syed and Bart Bargiel from London, Liam Russell from Hertfordshire, Kevin Chan from Middlesex, Walid Abid from Edinburgh, Pedro Vieira from Uxbridge, Tom Atherton from Cheshire, Hassan Bassam from Beverley, Daniel Wright from Liverpool, and Lewis Ray from Cornwall. Congratulations to all you guys, you'll be the coolest kids in school wearing those satchels. This week we've got 10 Street Fighter 4 brawler packs to fling to the hungry masses that are you, our Start Select viewers. The brawler pack contains alternate costumes for the big men of Street Fighter 4, including Zangief, E Honda, Rufus, Elfwerte, and Abel. So if you've been wanting an alternate costume for all those guys, then A, you should probably get out more, but also you can win one courtesy of Capcom and Start Select. If you want a shot at winning these awesome prizes, then and answer this question. What is the relationship between Akuma and Gukum? Send us your answer along with your name and address to competitions at gamespot.co.uk and check out next week's Start Select to find out if you've won. Right, enough freebies, grab your iPod Touch and let's go kill some infidels with the man, the legend, Solid Snake. So this is Metal Gear Solid Touch. Um, it was announced as part of a wider lineup of games from Konami uh, a few months ago, which included Frogger, Dance Dance Revolution, and Silent Hill. Basically, it's an on-rails shooter, portable version of Metal Gear Solid 4, complete with the same characters, the same settings, the same bosses, um, except without the two-hour 
crazy uh, cutscenes. One of the cool things about the gameplay is the sniper view, which if you pinch, pinch the screen, it zooms into the sniper view and you can use that to take out distant enemies. And then if you pinch, you zoom back into your normal uh, assault weapon. So being an on-rail shooter, basically uh, you hide behind these sandbag covers most of the time, uh, enemies will pop out and then you can use your M4 machine gun or a sniper rifle to take care of them. You can also get upgrades such as the Keratin Frog and the Gacko Duck, which we've seen in Metal Gear Solid games previously. They'll unlock um, RPGs and also a stealth mode and the, the duck will give you extra health if you get shot. There's also friendly troops, you need to watch out for them and uh, sometimes they're in the background, they're quite hard to tell from between them and enemies, so you just need to watch out for that. Uh, the graphics actually look really good for an iPhone game, they hold up pretty nicely. Um, there's some pretty good detail in some of the, the characters and the environments and some good kind of special effects like wind blowing and, and kind of debris and stuff getting on the screen. Uh, and the load times are actually really fast, which is quite good. As like any Metal Gear game, it's got a good orchestral soundtrack and some really good sound effects and it's got some cool extras like unlockable wallpaper and uh, background information about the series for newcomers. So the game is out now, the full version available in spring. It's priced at £3.49 on the iTunes store and if you're a fan of Metal Gear Solid or on rail shooters, you should check it out. It's probably one of the, the best games out there on the iTunes store right now. That's all we have for you this week on Start Select. Don't forget to post a few comments in the show page. We always read your feedback and keep those iTunes reviews flowing in. Check back in a week's time for more Start Select goodness.